Hi, this is Andy from GPS Training. In today's video, we're unboxing the brand new Garmin E-Trex SE that's just been release, released. This is replacing the E-Trex 10 that would you believe came out in 2011. So 12 years down the line we've now got a brand new unit that replaces the E-Trex 10. Still a monochrome screen but looking at the spec and the manual before we've actually done uh, do this unboxing it's got some amazing new features and it's really came on in leaps and bounds and they've added a lot of new exciting things to this e-trex range so what we'll do we'll open the box first get the unit out just have a look at it physically we'll get some batteries in and turn it on it's not going to be a full in-depth review we'll do that when we start using the unit but it's just to give you an idea and a feel of what the new e-trex se is about and go through some of the new features that have been added that totally change it from the e-trex 10 that it's replacing so box itself pretty standard Garmin box logoed with the Garmin logos nice picture on the front of the unit so we're just going to open up the unit and we'll see what we actually get inside the box so we've obviously got the unit itself nice yellow and black unit so it's keeping the same sort of colors that we had on the original e-trex 10 and looking inside we've got a quick start Garmin manual. I already know from looking at the spec on um, the websites and um, we don't actually get a cable with the unit. I will come on to that when we turn the unit on and why we necessarily may not actually need a cable to use with the device. So this is the E-Trex 10 and I know it hasn't got any batteries in but it does feel so light there just feels like no weight to it whatsoever. Um, this top part round the screen feels, it's got a sort of rubbery feel, nice feel in the hand, you can just feel it rubbery where it's, it's a harder plastic, the feel of the yellow. So I can see on the bottom here it's got a lanyard slot to slot a lanyard through. What's nice to see, it's got the standard spine attachment on the back, so it'll suit all the Garmin standard accessories that we get for the handheld devices. Um, I'll take the back off, which I can see a little D-ring here, so if I undo the D-ring, yeah, we can see in the back, so it's two AA batteries, the same as um, all of the E-Trex Ranger takes two AA batteries. Looks like we'll have a serial number in the back here. And actually, the USB connection, I've just realised there's not like a flap on the side or anything that we used to get. It's actually hidden behind, um, I suppose we've got the weather seal here in the back cover. That's the USB connection. And this unit actually takes a USB-C connection. So I know it doesn't come with a cable, which I will come back to. But if we were to connect it to a computer, it's actually USB-C now. So on the side of it, um, let's see, we've got a couple of buttons on the side that look like they've got, I sort of recognise these logos, that little teardrop shape on the button here will be something to do with marking a waypoint. And I know whenever you see two lines normally on a Garmin unit, that'll be a menu button, so that's the button there. Looks like we've got an up and down button on this side. It looks a little bit like the, um, I'm thinking of the InReach Mini 2 sort of style of button. So I have a feeling the menus, and again, just from looking at the manual in advance, the menus are going to be very like an InReach Mini 2. And yeah, looks like we've got the on off button on the top. So what we'll do, we'll put a couple of batteries in. I'm just using a couple of Energizer rechargeable batteries. So we'll stick those in. Shows you which polarity, um, which way around to put the batteries in. So the unit, two A, A batteries in, and then we'll turn the unit on, and then I'll run through some of the specs while the unit's turning on. So on off button on the top, oh, we've got a nice splash screen there with the Garmin logo, I'll actually take this plastic protection off the front, we don't need that on now. So it's asking me what language, um, so I'm assuming, yep, the up and down buttons are going to move between the different languages. And actually on the screen I can see here it's actually got marked OK. And it's got a little back arrow for this button. So this button as well has been a menu button. It looks like it'll be a back button. So the word English, I'm just going to press OK. So it's actually saying, do you want to pair to phone? So this is one of the first new features I'm going to cover that it actually pairs to the phone. It can use it with some Garmin apps. So I'm just going to say skip there. So I'm assuming down button, go to skip and OK. And it's actually got a little splash screen here showing me some graphics on things you can do. So it's got open tracking to view, map, compass and more. Just pressing the OK. Yep, that's letting me continue. Navigation control. 
button shortcuts is telling you we've got some shortcut buttons yep hold the OK button to mark a waypoint so I was right with that symbol it's a waypoint mark symbol and the back button opens the glances so I suppose menu glances is a terminology we often use in the watches where we've got shortcut menus so we'll have a quick look at that once we've gone through these splash screens and that looks like we're on to the main menu of the unit so I'm just going to lay it down on top of the box and I'll just run through some of the specs that make this so much different to the other Atrex units so we know it's got the monochrome screen now I know in the spec they talk about the screen being a really high contrast display so it's got increased pixels to make the resolution better when viewing outdoors and in sunlight and so we just spun it around there and it looks great inside actually looking at the screen I can read that absolutely fine so we've got the higher contrast display so I'm just going to run top to bottom with the key features this is the first eTrex device to have multi GNS support GNSS so it accesses multiple satellite systems including GPS GLONASS Galileo Beidou and QZSS depending on where you are just meaning in more challenging environments like tree coverage buildings to the side cliffs etc you're picking up multi satellites so it's multi GNSS support which we've not had on an eTrex before when we first turned it on we saw the option to pair with the phone the great thing with this unit you can actually pair it with the Garmin Explore app so with that app it means you can actually sync GPX files to the unit you can actually view Garmin maps um, I've actually noticed when I was doing a little read up on some of the spec that Garmin have written that when the unit's paired with your phone you can actually using the GPS of the actual device you can see yourself moving across the map on the phone app so normally you know on a phone if you're using Using GPS on your phone it really pulls the battery down but this way it's going to help with phone battery because it's actually using the GPS signal the multi GNSS from the unit to use with the Explore app so we've got the Garmin Explore app I had a little look in the spec and it actually says it works with the Garmin Connect app as well which we often use with the watches to send routes to so we'll give that a try when we start using the units that would be nice if it works with Garmin Connect as well it actually does live geocaching so anyone doing geocaching when you've got it paired with the Explore app you can link it to your geocaching account and then using the the sort of wi-fi connection from your phone and with the explore app you can get live updates and geocaches onto the unit that way without having to use a computer so i mentioned about potentially do we need the usb-c cable i think with this unit the idea is you're going to use it to connect to gpx files loaded via your phone and the apps and the same with geocaching so in theory you don't need to connect it to a computer but there is the option if you do get a USB-C standard USB-C data cable you could transfer files to it directly which when we start doing the training videos we will show that option as well but you would need to purchase an optional USB-C cable to do that and again I've already looked at the spec that this unit it will get software updates via the app when you're connected to the Explore app so again we don't necessarily need it to connect it to a computer even for software updates um, other thing we've got on this unit it's got a digital compass so on the eTrex 10 and the eTrex 22 units we don't have a digital compass so that means when we're standing still and we're turning the unit to follow a course it will turn with us to show us which direction we need to head in whereas when you've got a unit without an electronic compass you need to be moving so with this unit you'll be able to stand still and the compass will come into play and turn the course to the direction you need to follow it's a digital compass again it's got something called active weather which we see on a lot of the new devices so when you've got it paired with the Garmin Explore app you'll be able to get weather data on the screen that comes from your phone and then that'll stay on one of the screens of the unit it's all down to it being paired with Bluetooth to the Garmin Explore app now battery life if you think about it, we're not changing the type of battery we're using it's still two AA batteries but they're now quoting potentially up to 168 hours using standard GPS with the unit um, it's basically the what we're finding Garmin are improving the way the units process and um, the way the chips work the way they draw power the way the satellite chips draw power so using the same AA batteries that we may have used with an eTrex 10 we've got a much bigger 
battery life. We'll always recommend you obviously using decent quality batteries. That battery life is going to be based on the quality of battery we use. We like using things like the Energizer. Um, it was 2,000... 500 milliamps 2300 milliamps something like that of course if you buy some rechargeable batteries that are only a thousand milliamp hours you're not going to get anywhere near the battery life so just using decent quality batteries i mentioned about the display being a higher contrast which i can see might be coming across on the camera but this does really look clear and sharp and the fonts are clear and sharp and what i'm used to on the older units so it's just giving you an idea of those new features and i think the big ones for us are it pairs with a phone we can use the apps now so we don't necessarily need a cable the three axis electronic compass is great and i think having the you know the gnss just for more accurate satellite tracking and especially when in a more challenging environment i just think that's great so looking at the unit i can see a lot of traits that we see on some of the new units now where we actually have a display at the top showing us battery life the bars here will be showing us satellites um, um, when we're on onto them it'll light up it's actually telling me that it's acquiring satellites so i can see some menus here and i mentioned we've got up and down buttons so these will scroll through the different menus up and down so i could go into let's say navigate we'll see what we've got in there that gives me an option to pick things that we've sent to the unit so that's good pressing the back button and if I just go to satellite, I'm just going to see what we've got on the satellite page. Uh, that will show us when we're locked onto satellites what satellites we've got. So I'll just come back out of there. And it did mention that this back button, I think it was if you hold it in, yeah, it goes to what they call the widgets. It's a bit like something I'm used to seeing on the watches where you can then scroll through some shortcut menus. So I can see here it's got compass. So if I press OK, yep, I'm onto a compass. Back button. It's got sunrise and sunset. The weather it says not connected, so that's obviously where yeah, weather data would come when we pair it with the app. Just see what else we've got. Oh, we've got moon data. That's telling me we've got a waxing crescent moon. That's where the geocaches would be. Ah, and it also gets notifications. I, I did think about that, even though I couldn't see it in the spec. So if you've got it paired with your phone, someone will say ringing you or texting you, depending on how you've set it up, and your phone's in your rucksack to keep it dry, you'll actually see the notifications come through on the screen. So that's good. So we've got that in there. Um, yeah, just, you know, I just think all these new features on, you know, what is really a budget unit. This unit um, comes in at the minute retail $149.99. I know we've just got the monochrome screen, so we're not putting maps on it. But just to have some of a really good battery life, just as a bit of a backup where you'll be able to um, send courses to it to follow. Really long battery life, using it with the Explore app and that really accurate multi-GNS support. So you're keeping your phone for when it's needed for emergencies. And and using this device as a what I think is going to be a very simple to use lightweight very lightweight long battery life 149.99 lots of great features added many many things from what we had on the original eTrex 10 we're looking forward to using this new unit so i hope you found this video useful it's not a full technical overview it's really just to give you an idea of the look and feel of the unit what the unit's about and um, just i didn't go through any of the specs on the sizes and that so just to give you an idea and um, weatherproof rating it's got an ipx7 rating the weight of the unit with two AA batteries, it only comes in at 156.5 grams. So it's really, really lightweight. And the actual physical dimensions of the unit were just 6.1 centimetres wide, 10 centimetres high, and then 3.3 centimetres. I'll just turn it around on the depth. So it isn't, a, you can see, I mean, with it sitting in the palm of my hand, it's not a big unit to carry. And I think the fact, even with the batteries only weighing 156.5 um, grams, there's no weight at all in it. So we'll be adding loads of videos as we start looking into the unit. Anyone who buys a unit from us, you'll know from GPS training, we do all the training videos. So we just need to get into using it first, learn all the ins and outs of what it does, and then we'll start putting those videos together that you get free for a year if you purchase your unit from GPS training. So thanks for watching this video on the unboxing of the brand new Garmin eTrex SE unit.